We don't strive to lose every game. We want to win, but I mean, to me, this is the win. The team is always represented a way to connect to my son. Echo Fox was supposed to change esports. Built on a father and son's shared love for gaming, it was the org that was supposed to help validate esports to a mainstream audience with a sports icon in charge. I'm not here to yeah, debate the level yeah, at which it, they what, fit and slot in between, you know, between basketball yeah, players. Yeah, yeah, they are digital athletes. They're professional fun, digital fun, athletes. Fun. And for a while, Echo Fox was one of the biggest organizations in esports. Echo Fox will take third place and be the final representative at Rift Rivals. But then, just as quickly as it all started, Echo Fox imploded, creating the biggest scandal in esports history. I'm not looking to go anywhere, but I will not stay in a business with a racist. I spent my uh, more money, a lot of money, mm -hmm. to buy people out of control that were threatening to bankrupt the company. People don't know this story. They were threatening to bankrupt the company in the summer of 2018. Echo Fox may have started as the organization that was supposed to change esports, but at this point, its legacy is ruined forever. But before all the scandals, Echo Fox was a team that helped champion esports to the mainstream. And it all started as a father and son's passion project. First time I played League was with Kyle. This was a new game, and it grabbed his attention, and I wanted to find out about it. Rick Fox was introduced to esports by his son Kyle, who became obsessed with League of Legends in college. We drove over to the offices, man, walked in, and I saw this big picture uh, on the, in the lobby on the wall of the Staples Center, and I was like, oh, they must be basketball fans. And I went and looked, and I didn't see any basketball players, and I said, oh, it must be a concert. I didn't see any no. concert. And I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah. And they go, oh, that's the World Championships of League of Legends. And they sold out Staples. She's like, yeah, like in five nine minutes. minutes. Oh, yeah. Not even five yeah. or nine minutes, a quick thing. And I went, oh, shit. I go, can we get a tour? And when Fox decided to check out the 2015 NALCS Summer Finals at Madison Square Garden, he fell in love with esports too. Everything about the sounds, the fans, everything about the experience really reignited what I'd known for so many years. And on his way home, Rick Fox began thinking about getting involved with esports somehow, maybe even owning a team. I get off the plane, I'm at the baggage claim, and I'm standing there and my, my son goes, Dad, that's Reginald. I go, Reginald, who's Reginald? Reg. He goes, that's the owner of TSM. Oh, and I go, oh, dude, they just lost. I'm gonna go over and say, what's up? So, like, hey, Reggie, um, I'm Rick Fox. He goes, I know you are. Yeah. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, hey, my son and I were just at Madison Square Garden. It was a tough match, man. And I go, but he tells me you guys have won a ton of championships, so maybe you know, you'll be able to rebound from it. And he goes, yeah, yeah, he goes, he goes, he goes you ever think about being an owner? I went, oh, uh, no, I don't even know what that looks like, man. <laughs> like, he goes, you should think about being an owner. Mm -hmm. Like literally, Reggie at the baggage claim at LAX yeah. was the first person that said to me, you should think about getting in. And in 2016, Rick Fox founded Echo Fox. Now look, that all seems pretty normal now, but in 2016, this was crazy. Rick Fox was a huge name and the first big name from traditional sports to really get involved in esports in a major way. This man has high praise, uh, not only for his teammates, but also their owner, Rick Fox, and believes that the team will benefit from his leadership. It's definitely because Rick Fox is in the picture where he knows what's going on. I mean, it's also that he knows like a team environment and how it like is really good and how it's supposed to be. Because he's been a team captain before and he's like won NBA championships. I mean, he just has so much experience and value he can bring to like um, the team and I value that a lot. Echo Fox started out as a League of Legends team after the org bought Gravity's LCS ball and debuted in the 2016 NALCS Spring Split. This is now Echo Fox just gating all of them to die. There's the ace, a double kill, 7-0 and 5 for Keith. Deathless in his first game on his new team and Echo Fox at the day 1-0. But it didn't take long for Echo Fox to grow into other games. But Shazam has not seen him as of yet. But he's wrapping back around. And he gets the jump on him. A huge ace from Shazam, and he is fired up. Yep, just grab it. There you have it. Mewtwo King and Plum are your Genesis 5 melee doubles champions. He just he jumped on. onto it. Oh, he that's made it the throw. That's it. That's it. Tokido is the Evolution 2017 champion. Rick Fox's profile and desire to put esports on a mainstream stage quickly made the team a fan favorite. 
By the time LCS franchising rolled around, Echo Fox raised enough money to stick around in the league. And as if he was being rewarded, Echo Fox finished third in the following split, the highest they'd ever seen. Diving in, looking to take him down onto the fountain, not quite getting the kill, but the turrets are still falling, and there is no way left to stop this. A 3-0 sweep, Echo Fox will take third place and be the final representative at Rift Rivals. Echo Fox had found its place in esports. The league team was doing well, and the fighting games division was a juggernaut. Yo, wait, do not tell me we're gonna summon. Are we gonna summon? Oh! And Summon Fox is your Dragon Ball Fighters Evolution 2018 champion! Oh, oh wow. Oh, is that it? That is it. That is it. That is it. That is it. You two king wins. That's the champion. But suddenly, out of nowhere, Things started to go wrong. This, is, this has been my life. This has been my passion. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm not looking to go anywhere, but I will not stay in a business with a racist. I just won't. In April 2019, the Xerdo published a report by Richard Lewis that revealed that Fox was planning to leave Echo Fox after a shareholder allegedly made racist comments and threatened Fox's family. The shareholder in question was Amit Raizada, who had called former Echo Fox CEO Jace Hall a racial slur in an email. Shortly after the report, Riot stepped in. They conducted their own investigation and gave Echo Fox 60 days to remove Raizada before they took action. The 60 days came and went, but Raizada didn't sell his shares. So Riot forced Echo Fox to sell their spot in the league. So, you know, they were very much, look, you have 60 days, work it out, see if you can get him away from the situation. Well, in, in the US and in general, racism is not illegal. So someone with an economic interest mm -hmm. in a company, you can't make them, you can't take their shares, you can't yeah. make them go away, yeah. right? They have to sell their shares yeah. and or make a proxy or do something to remove themselves from, yeah. from the situation. He wouldn't do that. He wanted to be bought out yeah. and he had an unrealistic he probably wanted value a of yeah. what that the company was worth. Amit Raizada and Rick Fox went at each other's throats and aired out pretty much all of the org's dirty laundry. Raizada admitted that he had used the language that Fox was accusing him of, but he clarified that he wasn't threatening Fox or Fox's family. He was threatening to sue him because he alleged that Rick Fox had mismanaged Echo Fox to the point where it was harming his own investment. It was not just my debt. Everyone says it was just Amit, Amit, Amit. It was Amit and others. And an additional three million dollars or four million dollars of new money that came in on top of, on top of my money, and we're all pro rata in there, and that's how the company's been operating for the last year. If that money wouldn't have come in, and that money wouldn't have been converted. One, it would have been a default in Echo Fox's Echo Fox's riot agreement, and two, they would have had no money to operate. They wouldn't. Have, who would have made bills for the last eight months? There was no money. But Fox tells the story differently. According to him, it was Raizada who'd mismanaged the company, and Fox was trying to save it. The president's asking me questions. The, the, the employees are asking me questions about what's going on. Yeah. I go, hold on, man. Like, we're in a good position, right? And I go start asking questions, and I start digging, I see we're not as healthy as everyone thinks we are. Or should be. Or should be. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I get upset about that. You should. Okay, because yeah. now, now this is my baby that yeah. I handed off to you. Yeah. And this is how you're treating the baby? Yeah. Back in 2018, Echo Fox was dealing with financial issues behind the scenes. So they downsized, dropping players from COD, League, and the FGC. Fox says that those were tough decisions he had to make to salvage his beloved team. People don't know this story. They were threatening to bankrupt the company in the summer of 2018. And I had to put more of my money into the company to get it away from people that were going to drive it off the cliff. This alleged mismanagement coupled with Raizada's actions forced Fox to sue Raizada, along with Echo Fox investor and former San Jose Sharks co-owner Stratton Sklavos, who had actually filed a lawsuit against Fox for mismanagement the week before. But a few weeks after they were filed, both Fox's lawsuit and Sklavos's were privately settled out of court. And it was in, I think, the best interest of everyone around me that I care about that they could put it behind them as well. So I settled with them and we just parted ways and, and agreed to just let it be what it would be. And the, the brand and the IP um, is in good hands. It's not in my hands and it's not in their hands. But following the settlements, Echo Fox just kind of went silent. Echo Fox's remaining fighting game and Smash players announced their own departures from the team in February. 
And there was no fanfare, no big goodbye posts. Echo Fox's social media went dark. They haven't posted since September 2019. Echo Fox was supposed to be a dream made into reality, a dream shared by a father and son who wanted to bring esports into the mainstream. It was championed by a sports icon, someone who seemed above the corruption and petty feuds that esports was so used to seeing. But that dream turned into a nightmare a nightmare that destroyed one of esports most promising orgs. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.